Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of What the Dementia by Bamboo Care. I'm your host, Brianna Wilson. I'm a certified dementia practitioner and the founder of Bamboo Care. So if you missed last week's podcast episode, we talked all about holiday edition travel tips and considerations. So definitely check out that episode if you haven't already. Today, we're going to be talking about six holiday tips to help you have a more enjoyable holiday with your partner living with dementia. Before we get into today's topic, we do have some housekeeping. So first thing is a reminder that November freebies are now available on our website at letsbamboo.com resources. This month is Thanksgiving Picture Bingo, which is perfect for the upcoming holiday, and our 2022 holiday gift ideas for people living with dementia. There's about 37 uniquely different ideas, and they all have direct links to the products so that you can learn more about them or even purchase. You will even get a sneak peek of one of Bamboo's new upcoming products, one of our puzzles from our new puzzle collection that we will be soft launching soon. I am so excited about this puzzle collection. I've put a lot of work into it. I've put a lot of work into the designs and that it's going to be awesome and I can't wait to tell you more about it, okay? The next thing is that we also recently launched a new product called the Dignity Duo, which was created to promote dignity, independence, and facilitate improved social interactions. So if you find that others have difficulty communicating with your partner who has dementia, and you and your partner have found yourself in stressful or awkward situations because of this, then I definitely give the Dignity Duo a try. It comes with 20 dementia care cards and two magnetic buttons, and you may also find it helpful for the upcoming holidays as well. So if you're interested, you can visit letsbamboo.com shop, or there will be a direct link in the podcast notes as well. And then lastly, we have a new event coming up in December. December 13th at 8.30 p.m. EST to be exact, called Deck the Halls to Prevent Falls. This webinar is all about how to make your home a safer place for you and your partner living with dementia because by making simple changes to your home, you really can help reduce the risk of falls and prevent serious injuries, which is a major issue, okay? So during this webinar, you will learn why falls matter and why it is important to implement fall prevention strategies. You will learn common risk factors that influence falls in people living with dementia. You will learn general fall prevention strategies. You will learn how to create a safe environment through room-by-room recommendations and special considerations and simple cost-effective home modifications. You will be aware of specific adaptive equipment options to support home safety, and you will have the opportunity to ask any questions that you may have. And as a bonus, kind of, you will receive printables and handouts, and we will be creating a resource guide for all the mentioned products. And then, of course, you will have access to a replay. It will be a 14-day replay, okay? So if you're interested, you can register at letsbamboo.com slash events. The event is only $10 for a ticket to attend. And guess what? If you are one of our international listeners, this is an event that you can attend, okay? We've set up an Eventbrite link for you, and I'm super excited about this because I always feel so bad. I always feel like I'm leaving out our international listeners, but this time you are not left out, okay? And so I will put that link in the podcast notes. And just as a heads up, Eventbrite does have a couple of dollars that they add on. And then depending on where you live, you may have to pay something like a VAT, okay? So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the six tips that I have for you regarding the holidays. So tip number one, above all else, please keep it simple. And when I say simple, I'm talking about everything from the decorations and the bells and whistles, like all the flashing lights and the animated decorations or loud music, the number of people, the food preparation, okay? All of these things that can seem like no big deal because they're full of holiday cheer and, you know, all that can be very disorienting and or overstimulating for someone living with 
dementia. And so it's important to keep in mind what really matters to you and what traditions are actually important for you to preserve and then see if there's a way that you can modify any of these things and make them more dementia friendly, okay? It may also be time for more intimate, small gatherings, and I'm personally all for no-nonsense holidays or get-togethers, so if you have a troublemaker in the family that you know will just make things worse, you may have to let them know what it is, like, hey, you know, this year we just can't do it. We love you, and I'm sorry, but maybe next year. They may feel some type of way about it, but trust me, your peace of mind is far more important and your partner will unknowingly thank you as well. You only want people who are going to be respectful of your partner's diagnosis and of the current circumstance. And if they can't do that, then it's best that they don't come. Or maybe you don't go where you know those family members or even friends are going to be, okay? I also recommend you let people know how to best communicate with your partner before they arrive or before you arrive to wherever the gathering may be held. But if this isn't possible, then like I mentioned at the beginning of this podcast episode, we have some great dementia care cards on our website that you can hand out to family and friends that will discreetly let them know how to best interact and communicate with your partner. Now, depending on when you listen to this, right, they may not be there in time for Thanksgiving, let's say, but definitely before December or any December holiday gatherings you may have going on and any other outing you may have thereafter. If your partner has any triggers, that is going to be something that you want to bring up beforehand as well, okay? And then also gatherings, especially holiday gatherings, are very huggy, touchy events, right? And so if you don't think that your partner will be okay with that kind of interaction, then you may want to recommend people go in for like a wave or a handshake instead, at least first. And then hopefully they'll be able to pick up on social cues to see if a hug is okay or even ask, you know, do you mind if I hug you, right? Respecting boundaries. Tip number two, if possible, you want to make the home as safe and accessible as possible, whether it's your home or someone else's. So if it is someone else's home, you want to give them a heads up and let them know what would work best for your partner and see if they accommodate. That can be really helpful. So simple things to accommodate should be at the least clear pathways, a chair with armrest that your partner will actually be able to get into and out of, a clearly labeled bathroom, no open fires or candles, right? No decorative fruits or things that can be mistaken as something edible, and see if they can remove any known triggers, okay? But of course, there are so many other things, right? Now, if y'all are spending the night at another person's house or in a hotel, Do they have a bed that's a reasonable height? Can you bring a portable bed rail that's compatible with the bed to help your partner get in and out of the bed? Can you bring a portable doorstop alarm if you are concerned they may wander off? What about some night lights that you can put in the bedroom and leading to the bathroom? And then bring some comfort items from home like a blanket or a stuffed animal or their favorite pajamas, whatever it may be, okay? Tip number three is include your partner in the aspects of prep and planning that they may enjoy. Is there something they can help you with when it comes to decorating if you are decorating? Can they help set the table? Is there any way that they can help prepare the food, even if it's just mixing pre-measured ingredients or pre-cut ingredients into a bowl or pan or stirring the pot or maybe placing pre-cut cookies on a pan or even decorating the cookies? If you are making cards, can your partner sign their name as a family card? Can they write names on the envelopes by looking at a list of already written names? Can they put the cards in the envelopes? Consider how you can take what you are already going to be doing and grade a small component of the activity so that they can be involved as well, okay? Tip number four is to make sure that you include ample downtime into the holiday. Holidays have so much going on, they can be overwhelming, 
there's so much stimulation, right? And so you want to be sure that the holiday isn't so go, 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 yap, 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 noise, 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 okay? This is why providing a quiet room or something like noise-canceling earmuffs or headphones can be helpful. But it could also be a good idea to keep the event shorter than you usually would instead of like a whole day affair, okay? You also want to make sure that you are not on go, go, go either. If you are hosting the event at your house, then you want to see if you can enlist help to clean up. If you're at someone else's house, maybe ask if you can sit out on the cleanup or do the simple things. Maybe this isn't the best time to get drunk, right? You want to make sure that you're protecting your energy so that you can still enjoy the holiday, take care of your partner, take care of yourself without completely exhausting yourself, okay? And then tip number five is to try to maintain the routine as best as you can because holidays and travels both have a great way of throwing off people and their routine, okay? You want to try to maintain your partner's routine as best as you can. So this includes meal times, bath times, toileting times, especially if they're on a toileting schedule, nap times, bedtimes, and whatever else that is very much routine to your partner's day because you will find that it takes several days to recover from traveling and holidays for your partner, especially if the routine gets thrown off, okay? And then my final tip, tip number six, is to make the holiday inclusive. So for one, if your partner doesn't remember who everyone is or sometimes they know and sometimes they don't, Consider having everyone, including your partner, wear a name tag. You don't want people playing the guessing game with your partner, okay? If there's going to be fun alcoholic punches, make sure there is also fun non-alcoholic punches too because people just don't like feeling left out, okay? And it can become a big thing, right? If you're going to be playing games, make sure they are games that your partner can get in on and make sure that everyone is having the same experience so that your partner doesn't feel singled out. So large pictures, large words or numbers, familiar words or phrases, large print written instructions for everyone, games that play on long-term memory versus short-term memory, board games with simple, straightforward directions and larger pieces. If you're playing card games, can you use larger cards? What about simple craft activities, agreeable music, things like that? And remember, Bamboo has that free printable Thanksgiving picture bingo that can support up to five people, right, that you can download from our website, okay? Please don't have your partner just sitting there staring off into space because there's nothing for them to do, okay? Or they're just in the corner sleep because there was nothing for them to do. Now, if they don't want to participate, that's fine. They don't have to, right? But the activities should be inherently inclusive or there should be alternative things for your partner to do that they actually enjoy, like listening to music and headphones maybe, watching TV in another room, reading a book if that's something they can still do, or listening to an audiobook, having something to color, or to be able to do a word find or a crossword on their own, whatever the alternative may be, but they need to have a choice to participate in something and not be left out from what everyone else is doing, okay? So those are my six quick tips for the holidays. I hope that you will find them helpful and valuable. I want to wish you all a warm, happy holidays. Please be safe and please, please, please protect your peace of mind, okay? And then remember to download November's freebies if you haven't already. Grab your Dignity Duo or register for our Deck the Halls to Prevent Falls webinar and live Q&A that will be in December if you're interested. All the links will be in the podcast notes. If anyone has any questions, comments, or future podcast requests, you can send us an email at podcast at whatthedementia.com. Thank you so much for joining us on another episode of What the Dementia by Bamboo Care. We look forward to catching you on the next episode. Take care, and until next time, stay strong, care on, and remember, you are not alone. 
Bamboo Care is always here.